Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we're going to be taking a look at the WRT3200 ACM open source ready router by Linksys. So let's get started. I'm going to bore you guys with a little bit of the details, but you got to check this out. It's actually really cool. It's got a dual core 1.8 gigahertz CPU along with 512 megs of RAM, 256 flash memory, four gigabit LAN ports, which isn't too important now these days, two USB ports, one which is a USB 3, and the other one is where you can flip around and turn it into eSATA, and it's also got WPS, but please disable that. That's very insecure, so don't use it anymore. And the latest thing that it's trying to introduce is the TriStream 160. This new frequency is running on 160 megahertz, and it supports up to 860 megabytes transfer speed. Now, since it's TriStream, you multiply that by three. So on paper, it means it could do up to 2.6 gigabits, which is really fast. Now, it also has MUMIMO which is multi-user, multi-input, multi-output. Now, most of our routers that we're used to is only MIMO, which is multi-input, multi-output. I'm gonna talk about this just a little bit. Now, say you have three devices connected. Uh, one's streaming Netflix, the other one is doing YouTube or playing game, and the other one's downloading. So you now have three devices in this one highway. Anytime that it's using the bandwidth, the router's gotta figure out which, uh, who to send the packets to at a time. So basically, it'll send it to the person who's streaming Netflix. Then it sends it to the person who's downloading and so forth and so forth. Now, the difference here with the MUMIMO is that these three devices that get connected to a router, it gets separated into its own lanes. That way, you don't have that bottleneck or that latency or the lag. Now, the 1.8 gigahertz is something that I would say is overkill for a router, uh, especially on the factory firmware. You really can't utilize the full 1.8 gigahertz. But what's great about this router, it's open source ready. So that means you could either install OpenWRT or DDWRT. It has full support for it. So let's take a look at the factory firmware for a little bit. Here I have my router connected using a USB 3.0 gigabit LAN adapter from Linksys. And then I'm using a BeyondTech Cat6 cable. Uh, if you guys don't know, BeyondTech is a fiber company. They also make a lot of high quality cables. So I'll leave a link to them in the description below if you want to check them out. And first boot up, the password is admin. If you're familiar with Linksys firmware already, so you're probably accustomed to how it looks and how it operates. Nothing much has changed from there. Uh, the only thing that I think they added is this OpenVPN, which I haven't seen before. You're going to get all the default options. So if you're on a normal household with only a couple of devices connected, game console, TVs, uh, streaming devices and stuff like that, this firmware is more than enough for you to use. It also has a mobile app that you guys could use to control your network or see what's going on with your network, which is great. For advanced users, you wanna be able to do more with your network. This is where you would want to install the aftermarket firmwares. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to where you could get either open WRT, DDWRT, or to the stock firmware. So if you wanna revert back, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So here, I'm accustomed to using DDWRT, so I'm gonna be loading that up. I'm gonna go, to the download link and click on the one where it says that I could flash from factory. I'm gonna take that, download it, and then upload it to my router. So here I could hit the upload, find the file that I downloaded, and then upload it to the router. Give it a couple of minutes, and then it'll reboot to your new dashboard depending on the firmware that you picked. Now I'm not gonna go into detail as far as how to operate this new firmware. Uh, I'll probably make a separate video. Just let me know in the comments below if I should do that. By using this aftermarket firmware, you could fully utilize the dual core 1.8. Uh, using something like DDWRT or OpenWRT, you could install like torrent servers or download servers, or you could share files and do a lot of stuff that you cannot do with the factory firmware. Uh, one of the coolest things that I've been playing around with is mirroring a port. So I can mirror the port and then send all that traffic to my Raspberry Pi and then have Wireshark read all the traffic. I also have a video that's coming up soon that will test the limits of this dual core 1.8. So hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done so. It will give you notification when the next video is going to be out. As far as my thoughts on this, it really depends on your network. Now I usually have 9 to 10 devices connected at all times to my house and I don't even see a single lag. So that's great. If your household only have 2 or 3 devices, this might not be something that you really need. It really depends on how your network is laid out. Now if you, are, if you do live in like high density 
apartment building where you have a ton of Wi-Fi going on, I would definitely recommend this type of router because it's running on this new channel. If you are going to be using this new Tri Stream 160, you have to figure out if your computer or your laptop or your phone supports this uh, new frequency. I did have to pick up one of these Linksys uh, Wi-Fi dongles so I could utilize the new channel. So all depends, but. I believe Linksys is a little bit ahead of its time with this, but it's good time to upgrade because more and more devices is going to start appearing with this support. So thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, hit that little like button. If you've got any questions about this video, hit it in the comments below. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. Here I managed to desolder a male head from a USB device that I had. From here you would take a serial device or serial wires and then I just chopped it up and I'm using that for wires. Now here you would solder the male head to the USB.